the best thing about owning an EV is never having to go to the gas station again. But that means you'll need to charge at home. In this video, I'll show you our home setup and I'll cover the things you need to know and consider when bringing your new EV home for the first time. And stick around to the end where we'll talk about using regular 120 volt outlets to charge your new electric car. When we built our home and before we even owned any EVs, we decided to add this NEMA 1450 outlet. And that's just a fancy way of saying a dryer outlet, because that's basically uh, what it is. And if you choose to go in this direction, just be sure that you get a outlet that's designed for a high duty cycle, uh, because this will be drawing more power uh, than for a longer period of time than any household appliance. In order to do this, our electrician added this 40 amp 220 volt breaker. The electrical code dictates that the maximum you can use is 80% of a breaker's capacity, meaning we can draw 32 amps at 220 volts or around 7 kilowatts. So the cost for us was limited as a new build, but the average cost of the United States to add an EV charger is between $1,000 and $2,500. Now that varies a lot depending on your current situation in your home. So one of those factors would be the distance from your breaker box to where you want to put your charger. And then what type of uh, service you have. Like for example, in our old house, we had 100 amp service. So that would have been a challenge to add uh, EV charger with such a, a small input uh, coming in uh, the house. So it just, there's lots of factor. An alternative to the 1450, NEMA 1450 outlet would be to hardwire a charger. Of course, you have to buy the charger in addition to paying for the labor to run the wire from the breaker box. And Tesla is sort of the undisputed uh, leader in providing those uh, chargers. At, they start at $475. And they make some that are, and they work whether or not uh, you have a Tesla. They have uh, some that have the uh, port that will also work in a non-Tesla. But that's a good price, and they're known to be uh, very reliable. There's also a disadvantage to having a hardwired uh, charger, and that is if you move, you can't take it with you. Most experts say that a hardwired charger uh, is the best way to go. In this example, uh, we could actually have a faster charger uh, were it hardwired. Uh, the equipment we have here is limited to uh, 32 amps and seven kilowatts where you could go easily uh, up to 11 kilowatts uh, if you had a 60 amp circuit. So that's uh, something to consider. Regardless of whether you go with the hardwired or the NEMA 1450 dryer out like we have here, uh, it's important that you use a qualified electrician to do the install. I like to use Facebook uh, EV groups that are local to your area. You could post in those groups and ask who everyone else is using to install their EV chargers. That way you're sure uh, to get the best person. Of course, get more than one quote. The good news is there's a tax credit available for this. The Inflation Reduction Act allows for a tax credit of up to 30% or a maximum of $1,000 on EV charger hardware and installation in your home if you qualify. Please consult your tax professional because I'm not one and I don't play one on YouTube. Although the installation of a NEMA 1450 or hardware charger may seem complex, it's really not. It's not as cost prohibitive as you might think. And once it's complete, you're all set. My in-laws were nice enough to install a NEMA 1450 plug in their garage for us to use when we visit. I think they did that so I'd have enough charge to leave. So when you get your EV, feel free to share this video with your in-laws. If you're getting value out of this content, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Next, I'll talk about equipment options for charging your EV. Just like your cell phone, your EV needs to charge. This charger came with my Tesla that I purchased in 2019. However, Tesla no longer includes these uh, with their cars. But you can buy them for $230, and they include the NEMA 1450 uh, adapter. And this is how it works.
Okay, so here we're plugged in. You see we're at 32 uh, amps. Not only is our NEMA 1450 outlet only capable of doing 32 amps, but our Tesla uh, charger can only go to 32 amps as well. Uh, and in fact, my Model 3 can only do 32. But we're set to 32. You can always turn that down if you like. And you can see that we're getting uh, 8 kilowatts, uh, which is at 32 amps, 240 volts. And we're at 20, our state of charge is 28% and it would take three hours and 15 minutes to go from 28 percent to our set point 80 percent so we've been talking a lot about tesla and we got this with my car uh, and you can see that this doesn't match this and we also have a volkswagen uh, id4 so in order to be able to charge with the existing equipment that we have again tesla um, or nax um, charger or connector we bought this Electron uh, adapter, and what that does is allow us to go from Tesla to the J1772, which is what this uh, is on our Volkswagen, the 2023 Volkswagen ID4. And just like that, we can use the same equipment for both. Um, and again, if you were to buy something from Tesla, even though you only had, if you did not own a Tesla, if you bought a charger, uh, you could use this uh, adapter as well. It goes up to 48 amps. Okay, here we are in our Volkswagen ID4. Just wanted to give you a non-Tesla perspective here. Uh, we are charging at 7 kilowatts on 220 volts. And we'll be finished charging from 40% to 80% in 3 hours and 40 minutes. Just a side note, if you want to stop charging in your uh, Volkswagen ID4, it, there's no button here, and pressing the button on top, unlike a Tesla, won't stop it. So there's a quirk. If you press uh, unlock twice, it will uh, allow you to remove the charger. So the question is, why should I go to all this trouble and expense to put in this dryer outlet, the NEMA 1450, into my garage when almost every garage has a 120 volt outlet. Well, let's plug it in and find out. So if you buy this charger from Tesla, both the NEMA 1450, which we were just plugged into, and the 120 volt outlet come together. So it's easy to change. Just pull the one out and plug the other in like that. Okay, so we're plugged into our standard 120 volt outlet and you can see where before it would have taken over three hours. Now it's going to take 19 hours and 20 minutes to go from 28% to 80% Then we're pulling 12 amps or just one kilowatt. So yeah, you can absolutely use a 120 volt uh, outlet. But the problem is if you have somewhere to be in the next less than 19 hours and you need to go more than 80%. Or something to keep in mind is when it gets colder, these cars, any EV will use more electricity. It will be less efficient um, when you're traveling. So while in the summertime this might work if you only drove a few miles a day, in the wintertime, it absolutely might not work. So I would highly recommend getting at least the NEMA 1450 if you get an EV. It will make your life a lot easier. And it really will be one of the principal advantages to having an EV, which is never going to the gas station again. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this tour of our setup at home, and then hopefully that's helped you learn what you'll need when you bring home your new EV. If you like this content, Please give us a like. If we've helped you uh, with a little bit more understanding than when you first started watching, subscribe to see what else uh, we get into. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.